Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about soilless mix. What is it? How does it work? How is it different than soil? So if you are an indoor grower or hydroponic grower, you are probably using soilless mix in some way, shape, or form. You may be using um, plugs like uh, these flexi plugs, something like this. This is a soilless mix. You may be using something that's just a loose mix like this in plug trays. Now, we call this soilless mix because it has no soil in it. It is just organic matter, okay? So it's either uh, peat, it's cocoa core, it's perlite, it's vermiculite in some instances, it's wood products, so wood chips, that kind of thing, or forestry products and um, oftentimes uh, a fertilizer, a slow release fertilizer or something like that. We use this mix a lot when we're doing really root bound stuff for transplant. It works just fine in towers. However, you, if you're using NFT trays, something like that, you probably want something that's bound um, by something other than just the plant roots. Um, it's a great, great medium. And it's a great medium because it doesn't compact like soil will. It doesn't wash away like soil will. And it's very, very easy to use, to sterilize, and it promotes really great plant growth. So each component kind of serves its own purpose. You can buy cocoa core, which is just the outer husk of a coconut, or you can buy uh, peat. These are kind of the two primary components of soilless mixes. Now, cocoa core has become more and more popular lately because it's much more sustainable than, say, peat. Peat is mined, usually in Canada. They scrape up these bogs that take hundreds of thousands of years to kind of accumulate this biomatter. They scrape it up, they dry it out, they package it, and they send it out. There's a lot of concerns there about depletion of those bogs and the fact that we're consuming a resource that even though it is natural, it is um, not necessarily sustainable, at least within uh, you know, our lifetime. Um, so that's why a lot of people have shifted over to cocoa core. Anytime you see these kinds of little fibers in a mix, you know there's cocoa core present. Cocoa core is great stuff. It's easy to use. It's fairly inexpensive because it's kind of a byproduct of the coconut industry. The only issue with it is sometimes it can be a little bit high EC, so it's a little bit salty sometimes. It's something that's worth checking for. Now, if you're buying it from a good name brand source, uh, typically you don't have to worry about it. Most mixes today contain uh, peat, cocoa core, uh, this white stuff, which is called uh, uh, perlite, and it is just basically to give the mix some air, uh, some artificial air pores, right? Some porosity. It allows, um, it keeps it oxygenated, right? Um, and then uh, sometimes something called vermiculite, which is another expanded mineral uh, that holds water really well. So you've got your air holding capacity, your water holding capacity, and then just the general medium, which is going to be core or per, uh, core or peat or a mixture of the two. The only other element is oftentimes a slow release fertilizer. It will look something like that. And oftentimes this is incorporated into mix to make sure that the plants are getting the nutrition that they need. We're a big fan of soilless mixes. So soil would be uh, sands, it would be silts, it would be, um, it would be uh, clays, that type of uh, thing. It's inorganic primarily with a little bit of organic mix, uh, matter mixed in. This is primarily organic matter with a little bit of inorganic matter mixed in in the form of uh, vermiculite or perlite. So the, the pros of soilless mixes are that they're very easy to use. They're very compatible with almost all of our hydroponic systems because they are pretty much nutrient free when they come to the system. And so you know you control all of the nutrition in the root zone. The cons are that these, this is biodegradable. Okay, and that might sound like a really good thing, but occasionally if you're growing really long-term crops, you're gonna have to make sure that you have uh, plenty of, of um, things like perlite in there. Otherwise, it kind of compacts over time. If you keep it too moist, it will compact, it can get anaerobic, and it can decompose. None of which are great things in uh, the root zone. So you can buy your own prepackaged mixes. They're available everywhere. Walmart, your local hardware store, grower supply stores, and any type of like big hydroponic uh, wholesaler, you can find mixes pre-mixed. Um, a lot of folks though like to mix their own. It's very, very easy to mix your own if you've got a, a big trash can or something to pour uh, your different components in and mix them together. 
Most folks that do that are using something like bulk cocoa core, and they're mixing it oftentimes with perlite, with vermiculite, with all the components that we've already talked about. It's very, very easy to do, and it's very, very inexpensive to do. And uh, that also gives people a lot more control over kind of what the general mix is, over just getting something that's already preset. You've got this much core, this much perlite, this much vermiculite, this much slow release fertilizer, right? So that can be a really great um, opportunity for folks that want to be a little more hands-on and want to control all of the components that go into their growing mix. So hopefully that gives you a good overview on soilless mixes, what they are, how they're different from soil. They're called potting soil, they are not soil, okay? Um, so hopefully that gives you kind of a good overview on what they are, how they work, and uh, what some of the pros and cons to them are. If you guys have questions for us, please leave them below. We love to hear from you guys. We love an opportunity to respond. Um, check out our blog. We're going to be talking about this in a lot more detail there. And as always, please subscribe. Thank you.